five signs that you are meant to be a spiritual coach. Number one, people feel safe with you. You might be that go-to person that your friends and coworkers come to with the dramas and challenges of their life. You might also find that sometimes people you just meet, they end up telling you their entire life story. And you could tell as they're doing it, it's almost like they're surprised. Like, I can't believe I'm telling you this. You probably heard that one before. I can't believe I'm just sharing all this with you. Why do you think that is? Well, because you have a quality of presence that is, I would say, genuine, pure of heart. You're probably just a, a good, empathic listener, a nice person. And that kind of energy field that is just sort of like who and what you are, it's like a breath of fresh air to people. It's like, wow, I don't know why, but I just trust this person. I just like you. And it's like, you can, that's why I am a coach. I've been a coach for almost 20 years. And that's one of the main things is creating safety. And it's not something, it's something that's kind of hard to create if you don't naturally have that safe, open, non-judgmental, genuine presence that I bet if you're watching a video like this and you are meant to be a coach, you have in spades. Number two is a genuine passion for personal growth, spiritual growth, emotional healing, self-improvement. I know to you, these probably seem like things that everybody's into because it's just so like natural to you. But if you think about it, it's really not the case. You know, I grew up in, you know, all my high school buddies, uh, none of them really cared about these things. And when I was younger, when I was like, in when I was 19 years old, I became a drug addict and then got clean, luckily a year after. And that was when my thirst for personal development was almost, almost became a necessity, honestly, for me at that time. But I realized just how, how much like wiggle room there is, how much you, you can, one can press the envelope. Like, wow, I could read some books that are, it's like new information to me that I wasn't taught in school or by my parents, even though they did their best. Um, and I can apply it as best I can. And it makes a huge difference in my life. So what, it, it made me really just fascinated with the possibilities. And ever since then, I've been reading books and going to retreats and buying courses and just doing all these different things, investing in myself because I realized my personal growth, it like correlates with all the other important aspects of my life. So it's like a very high priority of mine. And also for like you maybe, it's just, it's just a genuinely interesting thing. I like to read books because I'm just intrigued by the idea that I can make myself happier, smarter, stronger, and, and things like that. It's like a natural thing. Number three is having kind of like a rock solid life experience. A lot of, a lot of I would say coaches that have yet to really become a coach that I've talked to, they feel ironically that because of some of the challenges they've gone through or some of the things they've yet to work through, they're just not ready. Who am I to be a, who am I to be a coach? I was a drug addict. Who am I to tell anybody how to like improve their life when I used to use heroin like a freaking junkie? Well, because that experience forced me to learn things and experience things that are kind of unusual, kind of unique. And it gave me a unique ability to really empathize with people's suffering and pain. Where people that I've worked with over the years, they trust me partially because they can sense that I know where they're coming from because I've been through it. In fact, going back to my, I don't know why I keep doing it, but going back to my years of addiction, I remember it was a big thing and all, I went to rehab like a six times, half a dozen times or so. And one of the things that was a very common theme, I would say among all the, all, all the, the patients, is we didn't like the counselors that weren't previously an addict, that were simply going off of the knowledge they were taught in school. We didn't trust them. We knew, we knew, you don't know what I've been through. How can you possibly tell me what to do when you have no idea what it's like to be in my shoes? 
So some of the difficult things you've gone through give you a unique ability to, again, have that trust with people and also have them take what you have to say to heart. Even though a lot of the advice these other counselors were giving me was probably good advice, I didn't apply it. I didn't trust it because, I, because of that, what I just said. But if you say, hey man, I've been through what you've gone through. I've been through it. I know what it's like and here's what I did that helped me. I, I'm, my ears are open. I'm open to what you have to say. So it's like, it's almost like after I, in sharing this, I realized like if you already relate to this, it's like you should be a coach. You owe it to these other people because you might be in this unique position to be able to help people in a way that many simply cannot. So the traumas you've gone through, the challenges, the, the injustices, the pain, the suffering, the dark nights of the soul are gonna give you something that no book can teach. Number four, you have a strong desire for more freedom in your life. Maybe not even so much of like freedom of your time and, and, and doing the things you want to be doing on any given day, which of course is desirable by most, but I would suspect more deeply is the desire for like an off to be able to express yourself authentically and creatively. And I know a lot of normal jobs are fine. They pay the bills. You might be good at it, but it might not really allow you to express yourself in the way that you want to. There's just no room for it. But when you're a coach, you have not only time freedom, obviously you can take calls whenever you want. In fact, when I was a coach at one point, I was literally taking calls at the beach. I used to live in San Diego and I would go to the beach with this little like $5 camping chair I got from Dick Sporting Goods and I would just set up, <laughs> set up shop and I'd do like these phone calls and there'd be dolphins jumping in the ocean and it, I'd have like, you know, getting a tan and it was so cool. So that was like a lot of freedom and I would be done by noon and I'd go home and I'd play with my kids. Um, that's cool, but what's really cool is to be able to say what's on your mind when you feel it. To, when you have one of those feelings like, oh man, something I could say could help this person. To know that there's a place for it and you can say it. To be able to coach and work with people in a way you have learned is effective. The way you would prefer to. There's a million ways to work with people. And you, as a coach, you're free to do it in the way you want. Whereas... Earlier in my life, because I've always had this desire to like work with people and help people, initially my mind gravitated towards what I thought was the only option, which was to be like a psychologist. And luckily I was able to talk to some actual psychologists and one of them said, dude, don't do it. Don't do it. I was like, why? This is like my, I was heading this direction in my, you know, my college career. He said, don't do it, man. He said, you, I know where you're coming from. I know you want to help people but you got to do it their way. He said, there's times when you like know what this person needs, but can't give it to them because it doesn't follow the protocol that has a lot of bureaucratic sort of like, there's a lot of influences into this so-called protocol that might not even have the patient's best interest at heart. And you got to follow that if you want to keep your job. So you're like going to create a box even in that circumstance. But as a coach, you're, you're just free to do what you want. I know one of the cool things I've liked about being a coach is that I'm always changing the ways I work with people. If I find something new, if I experiment a little bit and find a new modality or a new thing, well, I can just start doing it more. I can, I can just stop doing something that I get sick of or bored of. It's, it's complete, you're completely free to have a career and a lifestyle of whatever you want on that day in that moment. And number five, you have a strong desire for more purpose and meaning and like a deeper level of satisfaction in your life. There's nothing wrong with going to like your standard nine to five and, and, and being able to support your family and pay the bills. That, that's like a, that's a noble thing to do. There's nothing wrong with that. And that's, that's a lot of people are just content with that. But some people, they have like a growing yearning, I would say, for just something more, more depth. And there's a feeling you get, a sensation that washes over your body, a knowingness, a recognition 
when you're making a difference in someone's life. And that whole experience is very, ah, it's very priceless. It resonates with me. Just as an example, this morning, my Aunt Carol had a stroke about a year or two ago. And she's like in a wheelchair, she can't really speak, and it's been really hard for her. And what I do once in a while is I make her these like vlogs, these like vlogs of the family. And just earlier today, I, uh, I cut up like this like 10 minute vlog of a recent trip to Costa Rica and I, I sent it to her and she loves it. But anyway, like doing that, I know it makes her have a brighter day. And it, it's, it, it allows me to have this feeling of like doing something good in the world. And that's, you can't do, do that every day, obviously. I'm not gonna send her a vlog every day, but as a coach, you literally get to have that same type of feeling every single day you work anyway every day you work and even on the off days because what happens is your old clients they reach out and tell you how good they're doing and they thank you for for working with you and the thing something you said sparked a change and their whole direction of life is greatly altered and enhanced because of something that floated out of your mouth two years ago so it's like you get to live a life of like a, there's a clear purpose there's a clear obvious contribution you're literally you know you're making a difference in people's lives not everybody needs that but if you're meant to be a coach you need it you don't just want it you need it you know you're not going to be happy until that's your reality and by the way my friends before i go what inspired this video is now i'm i become a coach that actually teaches other spiritual coaches how to create a business, essentially. And coming up here, I'll leave a link down below for information. I'm doing a five, my friend Aaron Dowdy and I, we're partners, and we're doing a five-day free challenge, which is meant to help aspiring coaches learn what they need to do to make that dream or that yearning an actual reality. What we do in particular is we teach you the business side, which I know a lot of spiritual folks don't like that part of it, but it's essential. You can't really do this in a really impactful, optimized way if you don't understand how to set it up in a way where you have consistent income coming in so you can put all your energy into it, where you know how to get clients coming in every single month. You have the tools and then the confidence, skills to actually get people good results. And you have the systems in place to where you're not running credit cards and emailing people all day. Instead, you're on Zoom or on the phone working with people. We teach you how to set up a business. So this is gonna be perfect. For the challenge is perfect if you are already a coach but you just don't have enough clients, you're not really a full-time coach yet, or you watch this video and said, you know what? <laughs> Those five signs resonate, Vic. Sign, where do I sign? How do I get started? This is a very good way to get started. It's completely free. There's a link down below. Would love to see you there, my friends. It takes place on Zoom. It's five days of live interactive coaching with me and Aaron, and we're gonna walk you through step-by-step step, how to create, clarify, launch, and expand and grow your spiritual business so you can take this sort of feeling in your body and make it be a permanent part of your life.